I have people who just criticized Muhammad once. And he ordered his disciples to go and kill him. Even lying. His name is Kaab ibn al-Ashraf. He's a Jewish guy. They killed him. They lied to him. They took him and they killed him. He, he, he How does this man say this? He knows the background. Between you and I, Akhi Ali, he knows better. He knows the context. He knows the background. Do you hear that? And you're like, what? You know, you I'm, really, not, I'm taking a back. You don't know anything about Islam. And you hear this from him. You'd be like, man, for real? These guys, Prophet Muhammad, for real? He's, I mean, oh, he's, pro it's, he's so, basically so. depicting Prophet Muhammad وسلم, as someone with this grandiose, you know, attitude, so full of himself. And he can't take someone criticizing him. I mean, for the love of, Allah, for the love of God, Prophet Muhammad والسلام, was accused of a lot of things. Right, so for Kaab ibn al Ashraf to come along and accuse him of something else is that really going? Subhanallah. Um, how how can I say? Let, let's let's do this. Kaab ibn al Ashraf. I find it really really low for someone like this to say him to come out in public on a podcast uh, such as the one he was on recently to say that Prophet Muhammad was criticized once by Kaab ibn al Ashraf. Hello, that's not what happened. Kaab ibn al-Ashraf, and again, let's provide some context. He was not someone who simply uttered the wrong word at the wrong time in the wrong place. This man was known to be a criminal with a laundry list of crimes that he mm -hmm. perpetuated. Let's, let's, let's start down that list. First off, the Prophet ﷺ, when he came to Medina, when he came to Medina, he wanted to unite the Jews and the Muslims all alike under one community, not one faith, not not like interfaith dialogue today. We're all we're all the same. Hey, good, thank you. This is how we do it. No, the Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam, when he came to Medina, it was it was tribes, it was different tribes. This is an historic document. Yes, that was the created, declaration. Right? It's called the Declaration of Medina. Declaration it, of Medina, like no other. I mean, this is like he's trying to bring this is the peace. Yeah. This is the king of peace. He's he, trying to make peace in the community. He didn't come. If he was really coming and he wanted to get rid of the Jews, he had the power and the will to do that. He could have easily said the first thing we got to do is we got to get rid of these Jews because we simply don't like them. Let's get rid of Benu Qaynuqa. Why did he do that? Benu he had Nadi. the authority. He had the power. He could have done that. Yes. Yes, he could have. But he didn't. Because that's not who he is. His, exactly. his, his character, by default, his character is loving. His character is uh, for forgiven. His character is charitable, right? Uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is this is who he was by nature, right? It, it's when you get someone who's very loving and caring, uh, when you rile them up, there comes a point in time where you can push someone towards a cliff. They can take a step, two, three, four, five backwards. The next step, if they take, they're going to fall off of the cliff. So there comes a time where you have to start pushing back, right? So the declaration of Medina is Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam. He comes in, he finds all these scattered tribes, four tribes, uh, three tribes of Medina, Banu Qaynuqa, Banu Nadir, and also uh, uh, Banu Quraidha. The Prophet ﷺ, he says, this is one ummah. Meaning here, the word ummah, by the way, has a broader meaning. It has eight meanings in the Qur'an. But the word ummah here, meaning that we are one community, that we will fend the enemy collectively, and we will all stand by side by side as, a, as one group, as one community. Who signed on to this pact? Banu Qaynuqa, Banu Nadir. And also Banu Quraidah, all of them agreed to these terms and conditions that the Prophet Ali Wasallam stipulated. The first group, the first group, the Jewish tribe of Banu Qaynuqa was the first one to renege. They were the first one to renege. Treason now. Yes. The Prophet Ali Wasallam did not harm them. He allowed them to leave. He exiled them. The same thing goes with Banu Nadir. Banu Qaynuqa happened after Badr. Banu uh, An Nadir happened after Uhud and Banu uh, uh, and. Uh, Banu Quraidha. Banu Quraidha happened after Ghazwat al Khandaq, and Khaybar happened after Ghazwat al uh, 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 Sulh al Hudaybiyah. Mm -hmm. Now, the Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam, he let go, he completely let them go away scot free. Banu Qaynuqa and Banu Nadir. Okay? So the Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam, if he really had a problem with the Jews per se, because I know what he's getting at, and I'm surprised he didn't say it. They were literally trying to say that there was anti Semitism going on at, it, it, during the. The dawn of Islam, but liar. you can't, you he's can't, liar. you can't do that because Arabs are we'll give Semitic evidence. people. Yeah, he's lying again, they're, <laughs> liar. They're Semitic people. He didn't I, say I, that. I'm very, I'm very. Look, I'm, I'm very um, uh, 
I, I would think, you know, you know, not um, just myself. I'm not sure. someone to really attack people and whatnot. But right. when I see someone who's fake, a liar, I'm going to call it out. And, you know, even there's a lot of people who are out there who might, you know, be antagonistic towards Islam. But you can see maybe there's some, you know, the door is always open. But when someone's just a clear fake and a liar, he's this is what he is, you know. So yeah. I'm just calling it out. Um, so so let's let's so go on. Not, so we don't lose uh, drag on too much. Yeah, here. yeah. So the story of Kaab ibn al-Ashraf, I mean, he narrows it down as just making one silly comment. And suddenly the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, it's commanding him to be killed. No, this person was under the oath of the Muslim and he reneged. He reneged on that oath. He reneged on that pact that was between his tribe and the Muslims. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after Ghazwat Badr, after and we're not talking about this is not like a car deal like we made a deal for a car and we renege and whatnot. No, no, this is like this no. is the sanctity of life of this is the, the, this the is sacred. sacred sacred you know this is the serious yeah yeah this is serious this is not a YouTube share yeah. or a comment or a like on a YouTube mm-hmm. no this is far beyond that right so Kaab bin Ashraf immediately after the, uh, the, the, the polytheists or the Meccans were defeated in Badr this man Kaab ibn al-Ashraf Right? who was known to be a very wealthy merchant, by the way. He was very wealthy, he was very strong, he was very good looking. Yeah, and he, was, he, he had a lot going for himself, if you want to say that, right? He goes from his tribe and he goes to Mecca. What does he do? He ends up speaking ill of the Prophet ﷺ. He, يشبب, يعني, I want to say this in Arabic, المسلمين, العباس, he, used to, he used to perform poetry in the middle of the masses, Right, speaking ill of the wife of Al Abbas. Al Abbas is the Prophet's uncle, so he would speak about her, describing her in very intimate ways. But he would also do the same to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Those things, some scholars of the Sira say, those things could be overlooked. But the fact that he was there in Badr, supposedly this man now is supposed to be a community member of who, of Medina. He's under an oath. He goes and he creates chaos. He's provoking the Meccans to start a new war with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam, he was not again. He was not. He was not a zombie. He had eyes out. So people are listening and people are carrying news back and forth because this is an Islamic state that's under threat. And every, by the way, don't don't come at me with that. Well, why do they have those? Every country has al mukhabarat They're at the verge of an extinction now. Yes. Yes. So the Prophet ﷺ, when he hears of this, that's when the Prophet ﷺ commanded for this man to be put to death. Not his tribe, him. The Prophet ﷺ commanded him to be killed. Not his tribe, not his people. It's, it's, we have to separate between the two. So this is not some innocent man. One thing I think that's very important, and I think it's the topping on the cake. This man was a very well-known poetry uh, uh, at, at the caliber of another person by the name of Abu Azza al-Jumahi. Now, poets at the time of the Prophet, or during the first century of, of the Hijra, poets during, I think, even of the Jahili period, poets were like the propaganda machines that we have today, right? The CNN, the Fox News, the CBS, this and that and the other, right? They were the ones who would caused a lot of this havoc to happen they would be the ones instigating the war they would be the ones provoking the war and by the way it's funny because there, there's a book it's called uh, the shaping of the arabs that was written by joel uh, carmichael who speaks about this when she talks about the poets right she says that they were literally the ones who were adding fuel to the fire so this person was not just an average person see what i don't like is that the way he depicts this is that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is sitting with his, with his companions and saying, "Who should we get rid of today? Who do you guys think of? Uh, let's get rid of Kaab ibn al Ashraf." Excuse me, that's not how this happened. And I think people have, to, and I think Alhamdulillah, a lot of people, including non-Muslims, are starting to see Alhamdulillah by this great work that you yourself you're doing with a lot of these rebuttals, and Muslims have at least a final chance to answer and rebut a lot of this nonsense. People are kind of starting to see how much of a, uh, a snake these these characters are are actually uh, are in fact are. Yeah. And if you were to take not ten out of ten, a hundred out of a hundred generals, uh, some of the most famous influential leaders of their time. Uh, people who have the movers and shakers and whatnot, and you would ask them, okay, how would you have dealt with the situation? They wouldn't have dealt with it any way better than the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. 
Uh, you look at, you know, uh, people who are sitting, you know, at their keyboard and whatnot and just looking to, to, to foster and promote and hate and whatnot. They try to use these things. But when, when you put it in context and you see, like, okay, this person committed treason, you had the other person, the Sophia, the father, Sophia, he actually tried to assassinate Prophet Muhammad. They tried to kill him. Imagine someone tried to kill now the president of the United States and whatnot. Where is he going to be? What's yeah. going to happen to him? We yeah. understand that. Right. In this con but imagine at that time, even at that time, what were the, the laws, the regulations, the code? Uh, this the is code. all normative. This, this is, is norm all normative Nova protocol. This nor That's a, a very important point. Normative protocol that's happening at that time, standard. It's nothing new. I mean, and, it, and it's according to the book, the laws, the Torah. It's according to this. That's yeah. It, if you look at it, yeah. it's right there. Yeah, it's treason. It's in the Old Testament. Yeah. I mean, it, it's... So there's not much to um, even say more on that. It's just very hypocritical. You know, it reminds me... Um, I want to uh, quote uh, Thomas Carlyle. He said, The lies, Western slander, which well-meaning zeal has heaped around this man, Muhammad, so some are disgraceful to ourselves only. This is a very profound quote by Thomas Carlyle. Uh, and when people really look into Prophet Muhammad's life, they should, because Michael H. Hart has him as one of the most, inf the number one, he puts Prophet Muhammad number one as the most influential man in history. And it, it, what came to mind is the other side. When God Almighty Allah talks about uh, that we, I have not sent Prophet Muhammad except rahmatan lil alameen as a mercy to all mankind. And you had Jews at that time. This is a Jew, but what about the other Jews who were people who were looking at his life? Uh, Abdul Salam is his name? Right. He was a scholar, right. mm -hmm. the best of the learned men, academics of that time. He accepted Islam. Why did he do that? If he was like, you know, he was someone who was sincere, he was searching, he accepted Islam. Didn't you have a Jew also, another, was it a Jew, who came and put a loan towards, he gave Prophet Muhammad a loan, and then he was like, okay, let me test him. He fits all the signs, but let me test the forbearance sign, because it was in there that he was forbearant. He had to be, for, you know, if right. someone knows what forbearance is, sure. that's when you're in a position of authority now that you can punish, but you forgive and go beyond. So this man gave the loan to Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings upon him. You know the story? And then he ends up uh, coming back uh, beforehand and says, give me the money. You're cheap. What's going on? You know, you don't pay back, whatnot. And then Omar steps up yeah. and he's about to take care of business. And Prophet, Prophet Muhammad says, step back, you know, uh, give him in the, the money. In the li sahib al haqti maqala. Yeah. No, he just says that the person, in the li sahib al haqq, the person who has, you know, the rights, uh, had that have to be handed over to them, they have something to say. In other words, his his grief is understood. Was this a Jew man? And, was this a person who was a Jew? If we're talking about the same story, he gave it to them, and then he said, "Wazidhu ya Umar." He said, "Give him what he what he needs. Give, pay him his debt back and, and increase more. him and give him <laughs> oh, more." Wow. Yeah. And yeah. then and then Omar radiallahu he said, "Why did you do that?" He talked to him. He said, "I wanted. I was testing him. I wanted to see." And he did. He fit yeah. the description yeah. of being the prophet of yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. Look, these are the story. This is what we have. Right. Why are you missing out all this? What, what about the? We can go on and on. I'm sorry, I'm getting carried away. But what was it? Was the man who also tugged on the prophet Muhammad so much that he left a scar? Uh, yes. Yeah, yes. Is this the same story? Or is this another one? I think it's the same story. The but same I might, story. So yeah. this is added in there, he, right? So you got in this in this particular case, you have a Jewish scholar accepts Islam. You have this Jewish man also later accepts Islam. You had the uh, Christian. Uh, they say Waraka uh, bin These were the most learned men. My point here is when someone is sincere and they're looking at Prophet Muhammad's life from a sincere lens, generally want to know the truth. They don't walk away with like these guys walking away because they're not sincere. They're they're just hate provocateurs, and they're causing. And it's not in their interest. It's, it's not, not in, their, in inter their interest to, and and that's the thing. It's not in their interest to portray Islam through any positive lens. Mm -hmm. It's just not in their interest. No, and you have a uh, again because we talk about Jewish and like he said, you know, he makes it seem like you know Islam Muslims hate Jews and da 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 and isn't that Islam saved the jury? If you look at professor who wrote the JC essay, Jewish professor David War Warrenstein, he's a academic professor of Jewish studies. This is in Jewish Chronicles. His quote: "Islam saved the jury," meaning the Jewish people when they were persecuted by Christians and others, they were just. Uh, you know, ran out of town, exiled. Islam saved the Jewish people. It takes discipline and maturity to praise those you don't like. And this is something I, I believe both of these individuals on that platform lack. You are